morning. Welcome. So good to see all of you. Welcome to the Boise Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. I am the Reverend Sarah Lawal. It is my great honor to serve this beloved community. We're so glad that you have joined us for worship this morning. You are an essential part of our celebration today, whether this is your very first time here or your hundredth or maybe thousandth. You have to calculate if that's even possible. We are one people of many beliefs and many identities growing and learning and loving together just as we are. All of you is welcome here this morning. I wanted to take a moment to especially welcome our virtual group joining us out there in Zoom land. Yes, turn around, wave, hello. I love Tom Neal's heart in the camera. I tuned in virtually the other day, or I've been watching some videos, and it's just delightful to see all of your faces turn around at the camera. So it is a reminder that we are connected beyond our walls to one another. In joining us this morning, even if it is your first time, you are entering into a community dedicated to making visible in the world a profound love by nurturing spiritual growth, encouraging curiosity, enacting justice. If that call speaks to your heart, you are welcome here. Whatever your spiritual heritage, whatever you love, however you traveled here, your presence is a blessing. And we know that it takes a lot of courage to cross the threshold of a new community, either in person or virtually. So to our newcomers, we give you a very special welcome this morning. we have glad that you have found a home with us. We invite you to introduce yourselves in the chat online so we can warmly welcome you. And here with us, we invite everyone to fill out our newcomer form. You can find it by using the QR codes on the bookmarks out in our entryways or the online form in the chat so we can connect with you and keep you up to date with all that is happening here in the fellowship. And there is much happening here in the fellowship, so I have a few announcements for you. This, uh, our Boof quilters have created the most gorgeous quilt in honor of Ukraine, and they are raffling it off with 100% of the proceeds to benefit a local organization supporting Ukrainian refugees. So folks will be selling raffle tickets today. And our online community, you can go to boiseuu.org and click give at the top right corner and follow the prompts to donate and purchase your raffle tickets online, or you can do it on your smartphone here, whatever is comfortable for you. So, May, I mean, blessings to the lucky winner. The drawing will happen at the end of the month, so there's plenty of time. You can tell your friends, buy raffle tickets. Really, it's an extraordinary piece of work. I was just admiring it a moment ago, and if you haven't had a chance to see it up close and personal, I encourage you to do that. There are just so many beautiful details there. I also want to remind you that our racial justice ministry team is hosting yet another Indigenous Peoples Day program, the fourth annual one. And this one's really special because we are welcoming special guest regional neighbor Darren Perry as he speaks of history, healing, and restoration. And he explains that even though the Bear River Massacre was a defining moment in the history of the Northwestern Band of Shoshone Nation, it does not tramp my people to death. So we hope you will tune in. It's an all virtual program on Monday, October 10th. We will see you there. For those newcomers who would like to learn more about who we are and Unitarian Universalism, we have a series of sessions that happens after services each Sunday called the Inquirer Series. Today they'll be meeting down at the end of the hall in the North Wing. And we invite you to join us and come and check us out and meet more folks. And one final announcement, that's so many I know, but they're so important and these are big things that we're announcing. Next Sunday, we're gonna host a community potluck. Uh, we've been reminded and reminded ourselves that it's been two and a half years since we've had a potluck. Hoy, you know that, what church? Oh my gosh, that's not even church if you haven't had a potluck. So we're gonna have a potluck out on the courtyard next Sunday. There'll be an email sent to you where you can RSVP and sign up and say what you're going to bring. And we hope that you'll stay after church uh, on the 9th to join us for that. 
Our fellowship donates 25% of our unpledged plate offering in support of a local organization that we call our Plate Partner that aligns with our mission and justice work in our community. And this month, for the month of October, long time partners we have been in this fellowship and nationally with Planned Parenthood. And we're so proud to support the work they do providing uh, a full remnant of reproductive care and education and advocacy, which we all know is so needed. And really they have been uh, on the front lines for a very long time on the fight for abortion rights. And we stand with them and support them and are, allow ourselves to be led by them in the work that they do. And that work is ramping up and that work is continuing and, and we need each other in that work. So keep your eyes open for ways that you can connect and support their work beyond your offering gifts today. There are many ways that you can make a gift. You can use that QR code on the bookmark. It will take you right to our giving page on our website. You can go to our website, or you can put your gifts in the offering boxes right alongside the wall near the front doors. However you choose to give, you nurture this community, and we are so very grateful. Our spiritual theme for the month of October is courage. And today we're celebrating the courage it takes to listen to our inner wisdom. And today is our annual water communion service. Each year we begin a new program year together with a service focused on water, honoring the powerful themes that water represents in our lives, themes of renewal, of healing, flow, strength, release, and courage. And in this unique ritual, we gather the waters of our community, your waters, whether they are from your adventures this past year, two and a half years, or from your very own backyard, rivers, creeks, canals, garden hoses, bathroom faucets. These waters speak of our connectedness to one another, to the whole of life and to our planet. Our waters then receive our collective blessing and serve as our communal holy water for the year. The first water communion ritual was created for the 1980 Unitarian Universalist Women and Religion Convocation created by Carolyn McDade and Lucille Shuck Longview. And they chose to include water as a symbol of spirituality inviting the women at the conference to bring forth their water from across the country and share something about its significance. Of that first water communion service, they wrote these words. Water is more than simply a metaphor. It is elemental and primary, calling forth the feelings of awe and reverence, acknowledging that the ocean is considered by many to be a place from which all life on our planet came the womb of life, and that amniotic waters surround each of us prenatally, we now realize that this worship service was for us a new story of creation. We choose water as a symbol of our empowerment. And goodness knows that wo those words ring more true today than ever before. So we continue this water annually, this ritual annually, with the waters of our lives, honoring the holy water that connects us each to all. So for those of you online, I invite you to take a moment and go and get some water so you can have it and participate with us in whatever way you're able to online. And if you don't have water with you, it's okay here in the sanctuary, we got you covered. You know, Water Communion was one of the very first Unitarian Universalist worship services I ever attended. And it just feels like home. Walking in to see the altar set up today, I was sort of like, okay, all right, we're here, we are, we're starting again. Sort of our new year ritual, if you will, in the fall. We pushed it back a little bit this year, but it still feels like uh, a, new, a new start for us in many ways. So I'm so glad that you are all joining us for this today. As we enter this time of worship together, I invite you to take a breath. Fill your body with breath. Breathe knowing that our breath connects us to each other, to our bodies, and to this planet. 
Our breath offers us the opportunity for stillness, to tune in to our spiritual center, and listen deeply to our heart's own longing. In the spirit of worship, courage, and community, we extend this welcome, solemnly acknowledging that we gather upon stolen land that once sustained a free people. We come from and live on land considered sacred by indigenous people known as Bannock, Paiute, Shoshone, and many other tribes that lived here sustainably for thousands of years. We strive to understand and reframe our responsibilities to land, to community. In the spirit of respectful reciprocity, we honor the original caretakers of this place. We affirm the relationships we have to each other, including our relations to animals and insects that inhabit the water, land, and sky. We recognize the relationship, the responsibility to quiet creeks, rushing rivers, rustling grasses, to sprawling forests, to the brilliant palettes of the sky, to the roots that grip the soil, to the earth beneath our feet. Water is life. To all of us affected by the boarding school revelations, may we be granted compassionate understanding. May we find healing in the harm that lives in our history. We honor and support the right to sovereignty for our indigenous neighbors. We acknowledge that a land acknowledgement is not enough. Now, let us breathe together. Let us take a moment to enjoy the delicious air, the oxygen provided by tree. Hold to the warm light of sun. Consider the solidity, the groundedness of earth. Flow with refreshing, life-giving water. Let the mud settle. Find clarity of mind and spirit. Welcome our ancestors. Enjoy this present moment together.
At this hour, in small towns and big cities, in living rooms and ornate sanctuaries, many of our sibling Unitarian Universalists are also lighting a flaming chalice, reminding us that we are part of a great community of faith. Today, we have a young, first-time chalice lighter with us, Dublin Barker. We invite a child to light the chalice as a reminder of the hope for our future. As Dublin lights the chalice here in the sanctuary for our virtual community, if you have a chalice nearby, you are invited to light it with us this morning and share in the chat where your chalice is lit this morning. Our absolute honor to share with you first time chalice lighter Devlin Parker. <laughs> Devlin is five years old. He is the son of Reese and Michael Barker and the brother to Adelaide and Cardiff Barker. His favorite animal is the Komodo dragon and his Favorite color is blue. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dublin. With our collective chalices lit in all our spaces, we offer you this call to worship from the Reverend Karen Johnson. This is a call to flow as the river flows, effortless and mighty, to find hope in each other, to inspire each other, to never go it alone. This is a call to new beginnings, to new creations, to new chances to do good deeds, to forgive and seek forgiveness and be written into the book of life. This is a call to offer solace when it is needed and where, to find joy whenever it offers itself up in the now of every moment. This is a call to find your heart's most precious intention, letting it, ha letting it have its wild way with you. This is a call to come back, come home, Come to your senses, come to yourself, come to your whole and holy self. This is a call for body and soul, for each and every one to be healed by flowing waters, by mighty waters, by holy, sacred waters that show us the way. Come, let us worship together. All right, friends, uh, I want you to take a deep breath with me and feel the seat beneath you as we come into our time for all ages. Uh, our youngest and our young at heart, and also those of you in the front row, you are invited to come a little forward and be ready to get interactive with us. Today, especially, we celebrate the ways that all ages show up in our community. We invite those young and young at heart forward to get involved in telling this story. We are going to move and make noise together. Our story this morning comes from the Ojibwe and Anishinaabe people, and it is an important creation story. We tell this story today in honor of Indigenous Peoples Day, which happens next Monday, which you can celebrate with us and in honor of our promise to support and celebrate the sacred stewards of this land. My young people, I think you all have stuffed animals. Go ahead and come forward and take a seat, squat down, get comfortable. Thank you. 
Today, we honor and celebrate the sacred, stu sacred indigenous stewards of this land. Water communion is a celebration of the interdependence that lies at the heart of our lives. And the truth of that interdependence is made more real every day. Our story begins. The original people, the Anishinaabwe, strayed from their harmonious ways. They fought and lost respect for all living things. So creator, or great mystery, decides to purify the earth. With the waters of a great flood rumbling through the land. <laughs> a great flood swept the land, killing many Anishinaabe people and many animals. Nanabush alone survives and floats on a log perched that he shares with the animals and birds around him. Those of you with an animal or a bird, can I have you hold that up and wiggle your animal or bird? And just take note of who we have. <laughs> we have sharks and kittens and snakes and walruses. We have crabs and squirrels and puppy dogs and frogs. Everyone perched on, ooh, whales. There's lots more than I realized, yeah. Everyone sharing and taking turns on one log. It was not a very big log. People didn't have a lot of room. It was uncomfortable, but they stayed together. Everywhere they looked, they were surrounded by water. They looked down, and it was blue, blue, blue as far as they could see. Finally, Nana Bush decides, I'm going to do something. We can't just sit here and wait. If I go down in the water and can find a handful of earth, we can recreate the earth. We can make a new land. And so Nana Bush decides to take a big dive. Everybody, will you join me in taking a huge dive? Whoosh. And then we come back up, because we did not make it to the bottom. We ran out of air. And Bush tried over and over and over one more time. A huge dive down as far. He held his breath as long as he could down here. And eventually, oh, he came back up. Tired, more tired every time he dove. It's exhausting, right? It's tiring taking a big dive. The water was too deep. All of his animal friends looked around and said, we can try too. We can try too. Squirrel, where's squirrel or is it? That? That's muskrat. That's muskrat. I'm so sorry. Frog. <laughs> I got to get it right. Frog took a big leap down. Frog take a whoosh. And eventually plop back up couldn't reach the bottom. Who else do we have? Shark and whales and porpoises. All of you take a big deep dive down. And then we pop back up. Couldn't make it to the bottom. Cats and puppies and foxes who are land animals. Snakes take a deep breath. Whoosh. And eventually, oh, back up. Couldn't make it. Everyone tries, everyone's sitting on the log. Ugh, ugh, everyone's exhausted by now, not just Nana Bush. Everyone's commiserating. Oh my gosh, did you see that stick was in the way? It was terrible down there. And a soft, voice, a soft voice is heard. I can do it. Down there, everyone looks around. Who said that? It was Muskrat. Everyone takes a big laugh. Everyone laugh with me. Ha, 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 muskrat? Shark couldn't get down to the bottom and muskrat's going to try? Everyone's laughing and Nana Bush alone stands up and says, if muskrat wants to try, muskrat can try. We should support muskrat. And so everyone's like, okay, let's give it a chance. Muskrat takes a deep dive down. Whew. 
<laughs> and stays down. Everyone's waiting and waiting, waiting. Everyone gets worried. This is way longer than anyone else was down there. What happened to Muskrat? Everyone's worried. Finally, finally, Muskrat comes to the surface, tired, exhausted, and clutched in Muskrat's paw. What do we have in Muskrat's paw? Our friends, can you see? Clasp into his grip is brown and kind of mucky, had some sticks in it, but at last, at last someone had a ball of earth. Do you know who I missed? I'm gonna revise our story. Uh, <laughs> an important friend who tried as hard as anyone else was our great wise turtle. I'm so sorry I missed Turtle. Turtle was one of the first to try. Let's, let's pretend that that's how it happened. Turtle was one of the first to try. Everyone looks around and says, we, find, we finally have Earth. We celebrate, we cheer. Woo! Yeah. And yet Muskrat, do you want me to take Muskrat? Muskrat, that was too long down below. And Muskrat passes away from the sacrifice. Our Muskrat friend dies. Everyone, after cheering and celebrating, takes a moment and, and feels that loss, and they're sad. Turtle rises up and says, I will hold this earth. I will take this ball of clay. It, fit, it sticks, OK. <laughs> Everyone's surprised. Turtle carries this ball of clay and offers to bear the weight of the new land. Turtle says, with the help of creator, we can make a new earth. Wind starts blowing in from all directions. Can I hear some whoosh, whoosh. The four winds blow in, and they grow the earth. The earth spreads out on Turtle's back, growing and growing and growing. Finally, inch by inch, there's enough room for everyone to come up on the earth and stand and finally spread out a little bit more as the earth widens and widens. We get more comfortable. There's more space for everyone. The island grows and grows and grows and gets heavier and heavier and heavier, and still Turtle holds up the weight. Nanabush and all the creatures sing and dance. Can I hear some happy, joyous sounds? They have made a new earth with the help of muskrat and turtle who made great sacrifices. This is a heavy island. I'm actually going to hand that back to you. I don't know why I took that. Um, this island widens and widens until there is room enough for everybody. Finally, the four winds stop blowing and pushing that little ball of clay out, and the waters all around them become still. A huge island sits in the middle of the waters, and we know that island as North America, the whole area. Great reverence is held to this day for Turtle and for Muskrat, who made a great sacrifice in order to build a new world with great wisdom. <sighs> what a story. Did it. Thank you, everyone, for your help. All right, friends. Uh, you can, I'm gonna, we can set our props down. You can hold on to your props and bring them up after. You can head back to your seats as we listen to our community blessing today. It's a different song than usual. Uh, and everyone of all ages, you're invited to hang out with your families. Go back to sit with your parents. And we're going to hang out all together for the rest of the service. You can keep your stuffies. Yeah. For, for, for now. For now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, friends. Keep your heart wide open, though the waves want to push you around. Mm, you gotta keep your heart. 
wide open till your faith brings you back to solid ground. Mm, I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep my heart. I'm gonna keep wide open. I'm gonna keep my heart wide open. Though these waves wanna pull, though they want me around, though the waves wanna push me around, I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep my heart. I'm gonna keep wide open. I'm gonna keep my heart wide open. Till my faith brings me back. Brings me back to solid ground Until my faith brings me back to solid yes, ground We gotta keep We gotta keep our hearts 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 Around. Though these waves wanna keep don't just around. Gotta keep, we gotta keep, I will keep, we gotta keep, wide open. Till my faith brings me back, brings me back to solid ground. Till my faith brings me back to solid ground. Till my faith brings me back to solid ground. Till my faith brings me back to solid ground. Till my faith brings us back to solid ground. Till my faith brings us back to solid ground. Till my faith brings us back to solid ground. Say hi. Hi. Friends, I'm going to invite you to keep your hearts wide open as we enter into an opportunity for meditation. So I'll, I'll invite you to do whatever you need to do to get yourself comfortable into that meditative space. You can close your eyes if you want to, but you will need to open your ears. This is a soundscape meditation inviting you to immerse yourself in the experience of a day in the wetlands, perhaps a day by the river. And you may be invited to contribute sounds, so just listen carefully. You can peek your eyes open if you feel like you need to, or you can just let yourself be guided by intuition, the Holy Spirit, whatever's with you today. So imagine you are up before dawn. The light is just starting to grow, and you hear the birds singing, peeking up over the hillside. The sky is turning from black to gray, and the sun rises, and everything turns golden. You can see sunlight glinting off the water. and the birds really start singing. It is the dawn chorus, the burst of bird song right at the start of the day, birds warming up their voices like stretching. The sun continues to rise and you feel that first bit of warmth on your skin and hear the sound of water splashing as a fish goes by. The sounds of the water come to life with paddlers and kayaks and canoes out to enjoy the sunshine and the beauty of nature. Maybe you remember a time when you were out on the water, soaking it all in, breathing in that cool, crisp air. The day warms up, the sun shines overhead, and the sounds of life are teeming in the trees and the reeds, birds, and ducks, and insects. Hmm. The soothing conversation of cicadas.
And we know even nature isn't perfect and we have to deal with some minor annoyances like those pesky mosquitoes. But we breathe and thank the earth for the diverse bounty of its interconnected web. Thankfully, the sky is starting to get cloudy. It's mid-afternoon, and that rainstorm is about to come through that will chase the mosquitoes away, and a few big drops start falling, like the snaps of fingers. Snap with me. And the rain starts falling faster, like the shh of palms rubbing together. Shh, swish with me. And then it really begins to calm down, big slapping raindrops. And the thunder comes in. But it only lasts a short while, barely wetting the earth. And it starts to fade. And after the rain, the frogs come out, the spring peepers. We breathe in the sounds of the bigger frogs join the evening lullaby. And nature still houses all manner of creatures, even some scary, fierce ones who bring their voices into the mix. The sun starts to set. The lights start to fade, the cicadas and crickets and nocturnal birds emerge. You breathe in, nature's quiet. The sky turns gray again. The fireflies come out and the moon begins to rise over the river, reflecting in the shimmering water. And we breathe it all in. The songs and screeches, the sound of a hunt, Calls after a rain. Waking up and settling in. Loud and soft and everything in between. It is the middle of the night now and the moon has gone down. And so our day has come to an end. And for a moment, we have found peace by the river. Let's remember, we've got peace like a river.
I want to just keep going with all that nature for a minute there. It's beautiful. I want to thank the good people of the Unitarian Universalist Society of Santa Barbara for the sounds and the inspiration for that meditation. I, we have frogs. We live on a golf course, and we have the frogs. It's my favorite time of year when the frogs come out as dusk falls, and sometimes I'll just like to stand outside on the porch and listen to them. I've been known to trespass on the golf course and try to go in search of the frogs. Not that I want to bring them home or anything. I just like frogs. But I'm never successful at finding them. They're really good hiders, despite how loud they are. This June, I went to visit my sisters in Milwaukee. And one of them lives on the corner across the street from Milwaukee's version of our green belt. They call it the Parkway. And unlike our green belt, it has a network of nature paths that run alongside the river and alongside the paved part. And so one morning, I took myself on a river walk, which is one of my favorite things to do even here. And I followed the nature paths through the trees, enjoying the sounds of the river and the shade of the canopy and the cicadas and even the mosquitoes. And the paths wound all the way around to the other side of the river. I followed the paths deep in my own reflection and feeling the peace of the environment and the endorphins of a good walk. And I suddenly found myself at the end of the path on the bank of the river with no bridge or crossing that I could see. On one side of me was a sort of trampled path, scrambled up a hill to the rocks by nearby train tracks, which sported a rather large no trespassing sign. And on the other side of me, the river. And I wandered down to the bank of the river for a while and looking for a way to cross, and I couldn't really figure it out. And then I considered for some time just forging right through the river, because it wasn't really that deep, and there were some larger rocks, and I could sort of envision myself skipping across them. It was wide, but it wasn't very deep. And the closer I got, the more I realized that was probably not the best plan, and I'd likely get my shoes wet or worse. And so I just sat down a moment to think about my predicament, because I could either walk all the way back around, or I could scramble up the hillside near the train tracks and walked what looked like, I don't know, 20, 30 yards to a parking lot, which then kind of took me towards a bridge closer to town. I'll let you decide which road I chose. And this whole scenario really just serves as a perfect metaphor for exactly how life has felt lately. I'm just going down a path, even an unknown path, because I like adventure and exploration. And bam, stop. I cannot cross, I cannot move forward, I cannot do the thing I thought I wanted or needed to do. And my choices are go all the way back to the beginning or sneak my way through some other route entirely or wander forever looking for the perfect way to cross. How many times I fall into that trap. But sometimes life, God, the universe, wants us to stop and rest and take stock of the moment, to let the river do its job and flow and allow ourselves to be changed just by being there. Indeed, we're at a collective moment when there are so many rivers to cross. So many issues and challenges and obstacles that feel insurmountable, for which we are looking for the best path. Climate catastrophe, systemic racism, teenage mental health crisis, really everyone's mental health, freedoms eliminated, bodily autonomy decimated, speech silenced, so many injustices. Creation is in a crisis. And in times of crisis, there are different ways to respond. Some of us 
freeze in inaction, immobilized by the magnitude of what we're facing, refusing to move until we've laid out and planned out all the possible scenarios and outcomes. But that planning inevitably leaves you frozen in an endless cycle without ever really moving forward. But if you're like me, sometimes you just get caught in the like gritted teeth tension of the moment and you just forge ahead without pausing or much reflection. And sometimes that really trips you up or makes the journey even more fraught and complicated. And we've seen throughout history that the Western way is often the way of conquering, the way that seems to be my default too often, the way of fighting our way through a way that has yielded a lot of destruction and harm. And this mindset of conquering and destruction has been fed by decades, millennia really, by this frustrating interpretation of a theology that grants human beings a false dominion over rather than inviting a harmony with. But if we were to take a more earth-centered approach, one I would argue is more sacred and more in tune with nature and more in tune with the divine and that inner knowing, we might ask different questions altogether. We might ask, what is the river asking of me right here? Am I really meant to cross it? And the answer might be no, because our particular focus or attention or gifts are needed elsewhere or better utilized in a different way. Or the answer could simply be not yet. You're not ready in this moment, this time. There is more to learn on this side. There's more to do here. And let's not forget that our answer, the answer that comes to us in that moment of pause and reflection and rest is different from the answer of our neighbor who may also be stuck at the river down the way. We can't even see them there. And there's such beauty and power in remembering that we all have different roles to play in life and in the world, especially in crossings, in movements, in justice work. Each of our rivers is different. So when faced with a crossing, we might take a moment to take in the full magnitude of our surroundings and listen. Listen to our inner wisdom and seek out the sacred, like really seek it out. Many indigenous cultures name water as a sacred source of life. What if we looked for the sacred in the obstacles of life and instead of trying to conquer them, we found the source of spiritual sustenance and let that be our guide. In the creation story, we heard the Ojibwe story, the land was sacred. And that is sacred too. And the land had been disappeared by the great flood because the inhabitants fought over it and destroyed it. And the creatures took turns trying to pull up the earth, pull it back to life until Muskrat managed to get a small pawful and gave his life in return. It's sad that a wisdom tale doesn't really have a happy ending, that death was required for life to continue, and yet there lives a sacredness in that wisdom too, a deep truth of life. The crossing of death is its own sacred journey. Justice movements have only recently begun to incorporate spiritual grounding practices into activist spaces. I've been now with some groups who meditate and pray before their work or before their direct action, who center restorative care before, during, and after. Groups who are clear that we must tend and care for ourselves first 
and for one another in the long haul work of justice. Otherwise, burnout takes hold and no one is served. So when we tune into that sacred wisdom, we can better remember and notice all the ways that we are being held and supported, like the very end of our story, when the turtle, right, the turtle was the one that held the earth on its back, right, holding it up in this new creation. Indigenous folklore, the turtles represent wisdom. Wisdom is holding up the land. And that's why we create rituals like today's water communion that we're going to do together in just a moment to help us tune in and find and notice that sacred, all that is sacred in our midst. Tune into community and connection to hope and healing, to nature and life and the sustenance it gives to us and to that inner wisdom and divine spark that we all possess. All the water that we gather today represents all the bits of our lives and the specific wisdom that you bring into this community and into this world. And we gather it all up together and we bless it together and we make it holy together. Life gives us so many rivers. Have you ever had hard rivers to cross you two in the front? Yeah, you've had some hard rivers, haven't you? Yeah, that's what life is like. They don't tell you that when you're five, though. Life is full of a lot of hard rivers, and sometimes we can't cross them all, and we won't always be successful. And sometimes there will be sacrifices. But like turtle carrying the world on its back, we each carry a wisdom and love enough to hold up a small corner of the world. And together we lift the whole thing. May it be so. to cross but I can't seem to find my way over wandering I am lost as I travel along the white cliffs of Dover many rivers to cross and it's only my will that keeps me alive I've been licked washed up for years and I merely survive because of my pride Oh, that loneliness won't leave me alone It's such a drag to be on your own My woman left and she didn't say why Well, I guess I'll have to cry Many rivers to cross But just where to begin 
I'm playing for time There have been times I find myself Thinking of committing Some dreadful crime Many rivers to cross But I can't seem to find my way over Wandering I am lost As I travel along The white cliffs of Dover Many rivers to cross But I can't seem to find my way over Wandering I am lost As I travel along Thank you, David and Carrie. It is now our turn. Our turn to gather up the waters of our community, the joys and sorrows, the pain and grief, the peace and strength and love, and create the holy waters of this fellowship, which we will use throughout the year for different blessings. You are invited to share your water at the altar closest to your section where you're seated, and pour your water into the vessel, and as you do, you're free to share, if you like, with those gathered a bit of what your water represents for you today. If you don't have water with you, we have some extra vials near the containers that you can use to just add a little bit of water into the community and take part in this ritual. And at the side altars, while you're there, we invite you to pick up a poem and a blessing. These poems were written by Booth members at last year's outdoor co water communion service, and they're beautiful. So I invite you to take those home as a memento with you today. There's no wrong way to do this virtual community. If you have water with you nearby in a nice sacred vessel, we invite you to join us in the ritual, or you can just go get water now in the ritual and come back and have some with you. And then after today, we're going to take this blessed water and package it up into small containers and send it back out with you in the coming weeks so that you can have some at home to use. There's no wrong way to do this. Let the Spirit move you. I want to invite our children and our families to be the first to come up and begin and start our water ritual with us. Just sink into this time of reflection and fullness and presence. Bring yourself down by the water. Let yourself be held in this space.
symbolically combining our communal waters together, we'll make sure they get fully combined back in the kitchen with less hazard, hazard opportunity. I want to take a moment before we bless and pray over our community water to have a special moment to add some of this water collected here. This is the little vessel that lives in my office that theoretically contains 20 something years of water that gets a little bit added every time. And I wanted to add a little bit in, in memoriam for beloved member and friend Warren Bean who died this past Wednesday. This was one of his favorite services and I love his sharp optimism that even as I saw him on Tuesday, he said he thought he was going to come to church on Sunday. So, Warren, this is for you. And water from his house. Thanks, Debbie. That's lovely to know. I invite you to join me in the spirit of prayer, and I will share with you that this prayer was inspired and created from text of some of those poems from last year. Spirit of life and love, every year we do it wrong. We forget a vial, a bottle, a plastic cup. We forget as we walk the waves, she up to her thighs, me up to my ankles. We forget ourselves. Every year instead we fill a flask from our kitchen tap. Every year the same conversation. We did it wrong again, but what if we did it right? In the gathering of our waters, may we find inspiration and meaning. May we experience deeper healing from all that seeks to destroy us. And instead, may we be restored and renewed. A kind of healing that takes the form of perfumed water touched to the forehead and lips, remembrance and loss, of a full bath and Epsom salts sinking into a warm, insulated world, letting physical pain and mental anguish seep away. The healing of irrigation water full of algae, growing sweet, nourishing foods, healing, jumping without fear into cold mountain lakes, zinging along the nerves, singing with vitality, May this water here remind us of the waters of our lives and planet. The rivers and streams, lakes and oceans, canals and faucets. This water, barely contained in an overflowing jar. It came from the clouds as mist and rain. Before that, it was ocean and cosmic elements it sustains all life, mine and yours and those we love. We thank God for this life source that gives life to fertile fields and thirsty souls. May we treat it with loving care as a true blessing. May this water bring us closer to creation and closer to ourselves. May we know when to rest and when to forge ahead and when to let go and be carried downstream, held. May we keep bringing ourselves to the bank to listen and breathe, to dip in and baptize ourselves, renewing our gifts and commitment to each other and the world, to keep creating and innovating and being and singing and loving the world the best way we know how. In the name of this holy water we pray. Amen.
and the UU Church of the Palouse. That was the first virtual choir piece we ever did way back in the fall of 2020. So yay us, that was really awesome. I'm really glad that we have these things now. I would like to invite you to rise as you are able to place your hands over your heart for our closing blessing. Take a moment to look around you wherever you are in this moment to see each other, see your space. Today we shared in this communion of water mingling our lives and hopes and dreams into one common vessel, blessing it for this community. Go forth, but return here where peace mm -hmm. flows in and among us, where rivers of tears may be shed, where dry souls are watered finding the courage to hold on, where joy bubbles and love overflows, where we can be renewed again and again in the wisdom of life ever flowing. Blessed are we all. Go in peace.
Chaplin, great job with the chalice today. You did it. High five, my friend. Yes, sir. Well done.